All right, so recently on the show, I talked about um, experiencing uh, sleep paralysis. Correct. And today we're going to learn more about that and um, also some other stuff and some more clinical. Here, here to join us is clinical psychologist and, and a sleep medicine expert, the sleep doctor himself, Dr. Michael Bruce. See, I almost just fell asleep <laughs> reading yes. that. I'm glad right. we got you here. Right. Yes. I'm glad we got you here. Okay, so uh, welcome back, by Thanks. the way. Uh, Mark talks about having sleep paralysis all the time. What is sleep paralysis? So when you're in REM sleep, REM sleep, which is your dream sleep, your body is paralyzed so you don't act out your dreams. Mm -hmm. Oh. And when you wake up out of REM sleep sometimes, that paralysis hangs on and can actually cause a paralysis. Good news is it's not dangerous. Mm -hmm. And most people, believe it or not, I've even experienced this at times myself. So mm -hmm. it's not something to be super duper concerned. I find it happens when I'm like, you know, on a run, like really tired, flying yep. from different time zones. I'm so, so, so tired, and that's when it happens. So usually it happens for most people in times of dramatic sleep deprivation. Ah. So when you're crossing time zones, drinking too much coffee, running around, having like late nights, things drinking of that nature. Drinking too much coffee. Drinking too much coffee. <laughs> Sorry, because bro. I can't, because <laughs> I, when I think about a loss of sleep, I don't believe he suffers from a lack of sleep. <laughs> I think of him as one of the sleepiest people. He sleeps a lot, like a large cat. Right. <laughs> so so it, with some people, it's not about quantity of sleep, it's about quality, quality. of okay. sleep. And so one of the things we have to do is always look for that quality of sleep issue. Why do I feel like someone's in the room? So this is actually incredibly common as well. Um, I actually have had this experience too. When your body is kind of coming back online, all of your senses are kind of starting to show up. And so what's happening is, is that's how your body is interpreting coming back online. Good news is 99% of the time, there's not anybody in the room. It's just that feeling that your body gets. Okay, oh. we have to take a break. Yeah. We're gonna have more with Dr. Bruce when we return. Fascinating. Stick around. Fascinating. We are back. With the sleep doctor himself, Dr. Michael Bruce, uh, another sleep issue that we're learning about is narcolepsy. But before we get to that, I want to find out how, if Mark is experiencing sleep paralysis what do you do? at home, mm -hmm. what should I do? As a partner, yeah. So historically, we say, you know, don't mess with people. Especially like, for example, if you're a sleepwalker, you wouldn't want to touch a sleepwalker. But actually for somebody who's experiencing sleep paralysis, you can put a, arm, a hand on him, kind of give him like a nice soothing touch and let him know, hey, if you relax, this is going to go by much faster because the more you fight it, the longer. See, the, I, I want lasts. her to shake me out of it. Wrong. Yeah, he's told me not to like. I feel if she doesn't. I'm going to go into the light. Yeah, promise you, you're not. I'm not going to go into I the light. I promise you, okay. you're here. You're going to be here for a long time. Okay. It's not going to be an issue. Is there any treatment available for this? So it turns out. So number one, get more sleep or uh, get higher quality sleep is one thing. But it turns out that this can actually be something that people have, even if they have high quality sleep. There are medications that can be helpful for something like this. So it's not such a thing that you can't actually get there. It can also be a symptom of something called narcolepsy. Ah. He has narcolepsy. I'm not convinced. No, 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 <laughs> I am convinced. He can, it, it's, it, he can fall asleep in the middle of a cocktail party. So that, I would argue, probably has more to do with sleep deprivation. What, one of the things that we know about people with narcolepsy, which, by the way, is a serious disorder. It's a brain disorder. It's something that uh, causes people to have horrible, horrible sleep at night, which gives them sleep attacks during the day. Okay. So you don't have this don't have situation where all of a sudden you can barely keep your eyes open. Boom, you're no, asleep. No, like midnight mass when I was an altar boy. Right. Yes. <laughs> but Fair not, enough. But not, not he normal. Fall, he has fallen asleep during parent-teacher conferences. Well, that was boring. Well, right. I that mean, was so boring. Right. It was probably a warm room. They yeah, probably weren't talking directly yes, to you. No, I've, I've done that too. Yeah. I get it, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, narcolepsy is a much bigger situation. Also, it can have something called cataplexy, um, and you can actually test for narcolepsy. Um, you need with to the, get tested for. Yep. Yeah, well, there's a sleep test mm -hmm. at uh, at the in the evening, a nap test during the day, and then a blood test that you can actually do to confirm whether or not you have the diagnosis of narcolepsy. I got to be honest with you. Um, historically, in our clinics, we've treated many narcoleptics. There's a very low likelihood that you would be narcoleptic. Just real, I'm just really tired. You're tired, and maybe you need a little bit more sleep than yes. you're getting. All right, thank you, Dr. Bruce. For more information on these sleep issues and more, check out thesleepdoctor.com. We'll